Welcome back. This is Val Cameron from Dreamline. In this video, we're going to be taking posing a step further. If you haven't watched the previous video, Posing 101, I highly recommend you watch it prior to watching this video. What we're going to do next, we're going to cover two new tools for posing. All right. And then I'm going to show you two cool tricks that will make posing much more easy to handle for you. First of all, I have collapsed some of the windows. So if you are somewhat confused with this layout, don't worry about it. If you haven't watched the software video, this is step number one of the seven steps to grade R now, then you know that you can close and open and move windows around, okay? First of all, I'm gonna cover a tool called Power Pose. You can open the tab up here, Windows, Panes, and Power Pose. This is a new feature to DAS Studio, very, very cool. And I'm going to dock it up here so that it doesn't interfere with the rest of my windows. And this nice tab has multiple functions. First of all, you can switch between the different layouts. The one we're seeing now is the hand layout. If you click here, it switches to the full body layout. In the same manner, you have the face and this small icon here kind of moves the entire figure. And what this does is that instead of, in like in the previous video, when we were kind of expanding the scene tab, selecting different body parts, or we were actually even directly here selecting different body parts. Instead of doing that, you have the layout here and you see these green buttons here. And this is an extremely, extremely cool posing tool. For instance, you can grab this abdomen area here. And I mean, this is so cool. So cool. It's very easy to quickly immediately, you know, get the exact pose you're after. Such an amazing tool. Such an amazing tool. Can up here bend the neck and also have the head up here, right? But you can also click on the head here which will also bring up, you have the head up here, you have the neck down here. So the neck is the lower part of the head, right? And you also have eyes here, eye movement. So see how easily and quickly you can, you know, create different pose, it's, it's kind of magical. And you have full figure here, right in the middle as well. So next you have the hand section here and you can move, for instance, here's the left hand. Here we can rotate the entire hand. You have individual fingers and each finger has three joints, right? If we move the camera closer here, you can see that you have three joints one, two, three on, on each of the uh, fingers. So it's this is an, a very, very useful feature uh, for quickly getting the right pose, right? And in the same fashion, of course, we can also play with the legs. So switch to full figure here. You can move and rotate the legs here knees and the feet, right? Now, if you kind of get lost doing this and feel that, uh oh, my pose looks nothing like I wanted to, you can always click on the reset pose button up here, which will reset the figure back to the famous T pose, right? And that was the quick overview of the Power Pose tool or tab. All right, and the second tool I'm gonna cover is called Active Pose. 
You can find in multiple locations. One of them is under Tools, Active Pose. And be careful with this tool because it's it's kind of dramatic in its way of uh, moving and posing. Because what happens if I drag the hand, well, the entire figure kind of follows along, all right? So it's a really cool tool, but it's it's kind of dangerous to use and you can quickly get out of shape, so to speak, right? But as you can see, it's it's so cool, it's, it's so cool. For instance, we can take the leg here, and you know, it, it's it's so powerful that it, it affects both legs, right? So what happens if you drag here, take the head, this is amazing, wow. But as I said, you can quickly turn that into either a beautiful pose or a zombie looking pose or even animation. So <laughs> be careful with that. Anyway, it's very fun to use. All right, so these are the two tools I wanted to cover. Now we're gonna dive into some tricks. And those tricks are meant for you to make posing easier. First of all, when you are posing a figure, always in the start, use a ready to use pose. They, it's always simpler and easier to start there rather than trying to, you know, create a pose from scratch. It's much more difficult to pose a figure naturally if you are just, you know, starting with a T pose. So always use a ready to use pose. But I'm gonna now talk about a, an, an aspect of posing that is easy to overlook and that quickly creates chaos rather than help you along in your quest for better images. So here's trick number one. You pose the large items first, then you move to smaller items and finish off with the smallest ones. For instance, don't pose the hand until you have the figure in place and you have the elbow or arm in place, right? So start your posing by moving your figure into place, creating a rough pose, right? Then you apply rotation or bending to smaller parts like upper arm, lower arm, then the hand, and you finish off with the smallest ones, the fingers. I mean, let's face it, there is no point in, you know, adjusting the fingers until you have the hand, arm, upper arm, shoulder, upper body in place, right? Because you never know how the fingers should be until those larger parts are in place. So, let's take a practical example. We can load a set to our scene here. Gonna locate Dream Lounge. I'll load that item into a scene. Alright, let's suppose we want to have our model sitting on the table. I'm just moving the camera inside here. And zoom out. There we go. So let's uh, suppose we wanted to sit on one of the tables here. So we're gonna locate a base pose, as always, locate a base pose first. So my library, people, genesis, poses. Let's see if general poses has something we can use. Scroll this down a little bit, see if there's a sitting pose. V5 set, let's take that. Make sure our Genesis figure is selected. Double click on set. She is now sitting. So what we're gonna do is move her into place. I'm gonna just uh, open up a window here. Parameters tab. I'm gonna dock that on the right side of the screen. See, I'm constantly moving the windows around. Make that a habit of yours 
so that you can adjust the windows based on the task you are facing all right rotation I'm gonna rotate our model around translate I'm gonna move her move a little bit back and down just make her appear to be sitting on the edge there now just gonna move the camera closer zoom out This is not the best pose for this particular piece of furniture. So let's uh, go ahead and f see if we can find another one. We got several here. We got posed. Let's see if we have something sitting there. We don't. Let's uh, take a look at the pinup poses. Here is one sitting here. Here is one here. Let's see if there is one more casual sitting. Why not this one? A lot better. More suitable for this particular piece of furniture. All right, so I'm gonna take the scene tab, select my model, and I'm gonna move her slightly here and rotate her around. There we go. So what we're going to do now is adjust this pose to fit this particular piece of furniture. First of all, we can clearly see that there is a problem with our legs. They are kind of disappearing through the floor, right? So I'm going to locate the left thigh, right? I'm going to adjust it in such a way. You can either, you know, move the entire thigh up or you can also select the sheen here and see if that would help in that case pretty good that's pretty good and I'm gonna move the camera around here same thing here we just wanna you know make sure that the foot is not going through the floor so I'm gonna either rotate the thigh bend it or you can force it down quite a bit, but then extend the sheen, right? And let's just move the camera back a bit. There we go. And kind of colliding with the left foot, but that doesn't really matter. We can, you can extend a little bit more so that it's practically on top of that foot, right? That's a way to do that. All right, good, good. And now let's take a look at her left hand, which is this one. You can see that there is a slight mismatch. We have the thumb going through the table. So let's locate the forearm. Let's see if we can manage to, to kind of move it in a better position this way. And if we cannot, then the rest needs to be done on a finger to finger basis, right? So let's move left thumb up a little bit till we get it as much we want it to be as possible then we can expand here and as I mentioned before each finger has three joints so thumb one is the one closest to the hand then you have thumb two which is gonna be in the middle there and we can continue bending that or twisting or side side depending on where you are and uh, which joint it is right let's see if we can do this right here as well there we go, we're gonna survive that. Now we can rotate around. And we see that there is a small mismatch, small disaster here on this end as well. So we're gonna start with the left index. Um, bend it. 
you can either bend it down and then bend the the rest of the fingers up or we can just bend it up and see if that you know is enough to deal with this situation then you have the next one let's see if this mid section is enough to bend and it is good let's do the same thing here perfect and we have one more take that section and then we can see if the mid part of that pinky is something we can bend up and take the third part and bend it up almost correct let's see just a little bit you can also twist the you know the fingers around see which way it kind of works better for for your scene right so that was a quick way of of adjusting that all right now let's suppose we want to give her something in her hand maybe it's a remote control maybe it's just a stick it doesn't really matter if we are to add something to her hand let's say we just create a new item here primitive and we take cylinder we're gonna make it kind of small like three centimeters in diameter and maybe 15 centimeters uh, height and we'll just click on accept and then we have just created that item and it's right here in our scene now the obvious way of posing this item in your hand is to find it which is down here and then move it into place right that's the obvious way of doing that I rotate it and we can move it and can also use the translate tool and just simply move it here that's one way of doing that right however this kind of creates a scenario which is kind of tricky when we move the hand so if i select the for instance forearm we can go back to genesis and select left forearm sorry that's the right one right forearm and we can actually select the rotation tool so what happens is that the item doesn't follow along right so we're kind of creating a, a possible future problem so to speak when we move the hand or arm or even the entire genesis figure this item the cylinder we just created will not follow along so the way to fix this is to parent that item to her hand okay so what we're gonna do here is locate that item here is the right hand okay I'm gonna take that item and it's down here cylinder I'm gonna parent it to her right hand just drag and drop and release here now it's parented to her right arm what we're gonna do now is find you in its position but already you can see that if I select the right hand and I start moving that hand the cylinder follows along it's a much more pleasant way to parent this uh, or position this cylinder so now that we have a basic connection there, we can just fine tune the position. We can just move it slightly here in the cylinder. And this is, you know, very useful for guns, all kinds of weapons, swords. Let's rotate this around a little bit. Make sure it's really flat towards the hand.
Okay. I'm gonna move it slightly up. There we go. Now we can, of course, do this even more precisely. We can spend an hour trying to get this perfect. We don't need to do that right now. It's a little bit too thick, so I'm gonna go into the parameters tab and in the translation or transform, I'm gonna just rescale it on the X and on the Z so that it's not as thick, right? Now we can also place the fingers if you want to. You can take the fingers, you can take the uh, Take the index, for instance, and you can bend that around our item, right? We can continue and refine this for each section of the index, as we outlined before. You have three joints per finger. You can continue and fine tune this into oblivion, right? Like I said, we don't need to do that right now. And it's actually not really so now we have almost the finger grasping that item. The thing is, you now have a perfect, perfect, perfect relationship between that cylinder and the hand or entire figure because when we move the forearm whoops when we move the entire forearm the entire thing is perfectly apparent here right and as an idea you see that when you parent an item like like this to the hand it it kind of the all the emotions are kind of related to the hand so when you are for instance using the translate tool up is suddenly not straight up it's up from where it's parented so when you move the hand for instance you move the forearm uh, sorry you uh, rotate the forearm bend it then up on this stick or cylinder is not straight up it's up on the way on the axis towards the hand this can at times become a little bit more difficult so i suggest that you first place the hand all right then place the gun the sword or whatever item you have usually when you buy you know items uh, guns and, and the swords they have poses ready poses for that so you don't need to do this but at least you know how to do it if you need to do it manually but i suggest before you parent this item before you parent the cylinder weapon or whatever you have place it first because then up is up down is down left is left and you know in and out of the screen is in and out of the screen then when you parent it those the relationship kind of changes so you know place it into place first then parent it okay very good okay before ending this video i wanted to add a little small bonus here i'm gonna remove the cylinder and i'm gonna show you what typically happens when someone adds a pose let's say a sitting pose and places someone on a couch or a sofa and uh, so let's grab our Victoria here and place her on the sofa behind her. I'm gonna just move her backwards. And what typically happens is that someone drops a character. And I'm gonna just move it slightly down and that someone being actually most artists in the beginning they 
tend to have look at where the collision occurs. So they kind of look there is where Victoria touches the sofa, right? Well, don't do that because it looks kind of funky in a way that she has weight, right? This is a figure. So don't forget gravity. And what you simply do, the most simplest trick ever, is to let the character simply sink into the sofa. Just a slightly, you know, little bit. Just let them sink into it. That is, you know, those items are now colliding, but that that's okay. Because you are kind of faking gravity here. She sinks into the sofa. So just an idea, don't do that on the floor. The floor is a hard surface, but the sofa is a soft surface. Now we're going to be covering more about posing and especially posing furniture when someone sits down in an, in an upcoming posing video. But already if you're interested in natural posing, you can go to my website, which is basic3dtraining.com. Click on the 3 training tab and scroll down to 3D Pinup Master. This training specifically focuses on natural poses and it also covers lighting, specific lighting situations for pinup renders and also post work effects. But really, it dives into the advanced strategies on getting posing looking natural. Alright, this is it for this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.